Yeah, so, um, here we are in Super Pets. It's, uh, pretty basic, honestly. It's not too complex of a game. Uh, all you're basically doing is flying along. You can see, uh, the first footage here is of, uh, Crypto, Superman's super dog. Uh, I prefer, per, per, personally prefer the Golden Retriever version of uh, Crypto. This is like the White Lab version of him. Uh, you could do a mix anyways. Uh, that's not really the point. Um, that's just talking about a real life live action concept. Uh, so anyways, you can see how the One environment just spot. scrolls along. The buildings, like, because it's, it's so custom built around it. It's the same concept as uh, Star Fox. Uh, Assault or any of the Star Fox games, they sort of perfected this moving environment evil robot uh, effect. Down. You'll see Crypto dive down here, there's various cars, and they're moving at a different speed than Crypto, also that people's crappy little eyeballs can see it all at like 24 frames a second of movement speed. And you have to understand crypto. that that's what this is about, is making people's eyes have the best opportunity to have no frame stutter. <laughs> And, uh, maximum ability to see what you're actually doing within the environment. Same concepts that apply to video games here make a great right looking movie. You see how Super Dog has to dodge through all these towers and over all these rooftops. Um, he's the only thing moving. The, the environment is just coming forward and past the camera and that's very important because when it comes to a 3D project, you see how it comes around him real smooth? Even if this we was at 24, you would still get uh, a really good uh, perspective in a movie. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the next part here as the uh, black dog, well, not black. Uh, I guess you call mixed race dog. Uh, the next level here is what we'll be doing with Ace. Yeah, even though uh, we called him Max, uh, I believe he's. Uh, he's called something else in Batman Beyond. Maybe I'm wrong. I am, me on that. I am the knight. I believe it was called like Brutalizer or something. I don't know. He was a Doverman pincher. So things are, you know, not always consistent. There's a lot of different versions of him. I like that version, but this is a version that's more appealing to younger people. Uh, yeah, the, it's basically just super 3D and due to like uh, the sort of gentle movement and motion, it makes a really good video game. What I was going to say was, uh, these tight alleyways make a really good example of the 3D as the bolts like whiz past the camera. Uh, it's kind of hard to dodge some of them because they come right up into me. Game isn't that hard because you have a lot of health, but you will you will take hits. Uh, what was I else I going to say? Uh, just that everything in the environments are different like definitions depending upon where it's going to be seen and how far away it is. So, you know, the cars aren't as high a definition uh, on the street when you're flying above them as the robots that'll be shooting at you or as high a definition oh, as this dog here. So, for example, various levels of importance so people's eyes can see it because it's all cell shaded. So you can't see the pixel the pixels because all the cells, the pixel cells are actually shaded over with a uniform color. Uh, cars on the road are whatever, say, 480 way off in the distance the buildings before they pop in it's called in video games or animations they're you know but today we do a different algorithm I believe I'm not sure what this game is doing uh, as they draw closer they just become higher definition as the textures just become less foggy and sort of update into like uh, more pixels so it's very efficient on space as well which is good it makes the movie easier to produce and it makes uh, standardized production very easy to accomplish because everything's uh, efficient. Because I thought about it because there was these movies like uh, Fantastic, uh, sorry, The Incredibles and uh, other movies that are, they're fantastic when it comes to s space sweet. constraints, the new uh, Incredibles film and other movies. So when I was thinking about it, I said to myself, if I could get modern computers like for example you know the little mini uh, GPU CPU computers there's Intel ones now too on the market okay, okay. 
and uh, kind of make it uniform for that type of computer render space and have a bunch of them working together, you know, in, in units, because they, they can. Then you could really get different parts and different teams on different aspects of, say, uh, the way uh, the environment, the camera is going to move through a city because it's, you know, just a movie. So there's not even a dog moving. It's much easier. Everything's pre-planned motions. Uh, they don't shoot any custom direction, any of the robots, for example, in scenes like here. So that's why, it, you know, of course, it, it looks good for being like that clay animation Play-Doh effect. Uh... But, you know, it's it's uh, very clever the way it works. It's not actually that amazing yeah, looking at all distances and stuff. I mean, in the movie, they're probably using an even more complex effect because what we actually Don't talked about, me and my uh, brother, was basically um, like the buildings, the environment, not only would the camera be like moving through it, but also all the buildings and everything, because it's an animation, can be moving, sort of unfolding like a geometric pattern, like how a, a flower sort of opens on itself. So you see more as it moves more, and both everything is moving on everything else, so you're getting movement on movement for better 3D. Uh, they might have achieved this here. It looks like they did, so uh, maybe I'm just uh, doubting them. And uh, I mean, it's pretty impressive the the way it looks for weak people's eyes, because it's uh, you know when everything's moving different speeds and it's all calculated for not 2020 vision and not really very good uh, ocular acution, you know, in the frontal lobe hippocampus. I believe that's the terminology. Is that hippocampus? I don't know. Anyways, in the various spots in the brain where you process things quickly, this makes it to where the colors can sort of fade and transition between each other well, because there's no uh, shakiness to the animation. It's all very floaty, which works very well for superhero, super pets type movies. Yeah, basically all the, the goal was was to standardize things so that everybody had a definition of what uh, some movie like The Incredibles or something, or uh, some movie, Big Hero 6 or something, what it takes to make one of those, like, what level of um, generalized processing, how many computers. Yeah, I mean, this was a, this is a okay game. I think they kind of padded it out way more than it should have. Other people, I'm sure, padded out this title. I don't think it was the fault of the people who designed the test game that I told them to for the movie. Uh, I don't know how it gets into the hands of other people and they just repeat stuff so much. But, uh, irregardless, um, I guess I'll play one more level because I have a bit more to talk about. Time for justice. So, here's another concept. Um, particle effects, they really have no definition. They're just light renders, so they're not really using pixels, even though they exist within pixel rendered units. Like, they, de they have a vaguely defined region and zone, the light uh, halos and auras, uh, within the actual visual spectrum. So those, those can be just rendered out of solid colors, which is really good. You saw the game pause here for a second. That was um, the game, you know, showing that it's just moving along. Like, uh, Crypto just stopped and shot at everything. Anyway, um, kind of uh, the, the most important aspect of all of this is the concept of basically, like I say, unfolding. Sort of the environment in front of you, like in between these buildings, is sort of moving. Uh, forward, past, into the sides, and away, all the signs are in the little water towers, and it causes this um, effect where your brain at no point can't process it, no matter how old and uh, dementia riddled basically your brain is, because uh, everything's connected to everything else physically within the 3D environment's animation, so there's no real sense of ever having left the environment, the environment's kind of showing you everything as it moves past you and uh, that's what's happening at you in a theater that's why I was pushing for um, lidar into the eyes instead of cross placed within the environment because ordinarily they'd say that there is cross shading of lidar light and it makes the shadows or the highlights on things and lidar is for blind people 
uh, it shouldn't really need to use that either, but if it was going to, for a version that people are going to watch, instead of an analog version using, like, Ryzen GPU CPUs, then, uh, it would definitely need probably to use Intel, because it's better than NVIDIA, and the physics are better, and it, then it could run still analog. It could be, you know, progressively scanned by interlacing, um, but yeah, those, those lines of light need to be coming straight at the camera like little dots so the environment, you know, it works perfectly for this type of environment. I hope they employ that with Super Pets too because then uh, all the solid colors, they're made out of solid light and come right at your eyes and it's like unfolding light that's supposed to bounce off of the this projector screen and, uh, you know, like be represented as... Um, little beams, you know, like little dots of light, so you can actually see it. Cause, uh, yeah, everybody's got real fucked up eyes. <laughs> Anyways, um, another point here is, is that, like, distortion also a tape takes place in a great factor. Cause you see how it's distorting around him here? Well, that's the environment actually, like, changing so that whatever's seen is, uh, basically kind of like warping around him so it's just folding like his character model the only thing that's happening Ooh, that is the camera is changing sweet. angles um, on his character model supposedly you'd say that uh, when he was running on the ground there but it, it's not really the environment is changing around Another him and his character model is changing angles while the camera once again stays the same in it so everything's just kind of like rotating on itself basically within an environment. The you know, the, these buildings they're pulling forward and away from the camera. The camera is moving at a steady rate through it. And the dog is also just sitting in front of the camera. That's the example of like if Super Dog was moving and the camera was following him. It's easier on the okay. eyes because okay. of that. Hey, um kind of running out of things to say. Um Trying to figure out um, what else I should say. Basically, just that this is um, just to try to make the animation more efficient. And that's the only reason that I was even talking about this and came up with this. But uh, yeah, even the most basic movies, just outputting light, it only costs whatever amount of energy and whatever amount of anything out of the light render units. Because you don't really need to produce lines when it's analog. I guess that's about it. You can just watch the rest of the footage if you like. Take that, you hunk of junk. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs>